All right, so here we go. We're going to get started on chapter two um, of the Ruth Bible study. And first of all, let me just say welcome to everybody that is on here. Um, I'm sorry that it's taken me two weeks to film chapter two, but um, spring break and then last week was kind of crazy. So today was my first free day and I was like, okay, we're filming today. So um, I had somebody ask me too why why I was doing this, why I was doing this Bible study on the book of Ruth and why was I doing it live? Well, let me just share with you a little bit. Um, she is sharing, healing, and empowering, and we're sharing the Word of God, and I chose this story from the book of Ruth because it brings such hope, and it's a story of determination, and we see God work. Um, we see God working through the background. We see Him doing what we thought was impossible. He does things that we can't even fathom behind the scenes. And he has, it shows God's perfect plan for our lives. And so, um, sorry guys, I'm trying to fix that here. So I love this story. I just love everything about it. So I just wanted to start off with that. Um, if, you ha if you have your Bible, if you wanna pull it up on your, um, well you can't really pull it up on your app if you're watching this. But if you do have your Bible and you want to follow along, go ahead and get it. Um, we're going to start in chapter 2. And if you remember, we left off with um, Naomi and Ruth coming back to Bethlehem at the time of the harvest. And it's kind of windy and my umbrella is kind of going crazy. <laughs> so just ignore it right now. But um, we left off that they came back to Bethlehem. Um, which was Naomi's hometown and they just came back at the time that was the barley harvest um, Which is crazy because they had they were leaving um, where they were at because there was There was a food shortage So Naomi decided to go back to her hometown and when they arrived they arrived at the perfect time Which shows how God is working all things out. So let's start off with chapter 2 and um, on my Bible It says when Ruth and Boaz meet so we're gonna get to Boaz in just a minute now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side named Boaz. He was a prominent man of noble character from Elimelech's family. So from her husband's side, Boaz was in relation to them. So Ruth the Moabitess asked Naomi, will you let me go into the fields and gather fallen grain behind someone who allows me to? Naomi answered her, go ahead, my daughter. So Ruth left and entered the field to gather grain behind the harvesters. She happened to be in the portion, portion of the land belonging to Boaz, who was from Elimelech's family. So first of all, she didn't know. She didn't know that the field that she had gone to go get some leftover grain was from Boaz, which ended up being related to Elimelech, which was her father-in-law crazy right later when Boaz arrived from Bethlehem he said to the harvesters the Lord be with you the Lord bless you they replied Boaz asked his servant who was in charge of the harvesters whose young woman is this the servant answered she is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab pretty amazing I wanted to read some of my notes because um it was pretty good. So um, I want to talk about divine appointment real quick, which, and I'm talking about how she just happened to be gleaning in Boaz's, Boaz in his field. Um, again, here we see how God works all things out, which is a verse in Romans 8, 27. Um, Ruth, in the previous chapter, she had declared Naomi's God her God. Do you guys remember that when she made that declaration in chapter 1? Um, God had a purpose for her life and we see it here all unfolding little by little verse by verse what were the chances this is what's so crazy to me like what were the chances of her gleaning in a relative of Naomi and Elimelech's land what are the chances of that that's crazy that's crazy like I can't you know that's when you know that God is in it. He's all about the details. 
And I want you to think about times in your life where God has su completely surprised you. I want you to think back to times and things that have specifically happened to you in your life where you have seen, okay, like you never saw it coming. You never saw this being um, something, like maybe something really bad happened in your life, right? Maybe um, there was, you were at the lowest place and it seemed hopeless for you. And you're thinking to yourself, how can it go up from here? And you're just like, Lord, I don't know what is going to happen next. This gives us hope. This gives us hope that God has our future in his hands. We are seeing this unfold little by little. And isn't that just how God is? Like we see, we think of the worst. Like we think the worst of a situation. When something catches us off guard and when we're blindsided, we're immediately caught up on that, right? We're immediately um, distraught. We are... We're like, Lord, how is this your will? How is this your plan? But this gives me hope. This passage of scripture, this chapter here is giving me hope to know that even though, you know, she, she went through death. She went through death. She lost her husband. Um, now she's in a foreign land. She doesn't know these people. But God sets her up in the right time, in his perfect timing, to glean in Boaz's field. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And I want to I want to um, talk a little bit about how we see how she is a hard worker. Remember in verse 7, the worker reported to Boaz, she's came, she came and has um, remained from early morning until now except that she's rested a little bit in the shelter. So the worker took note that she was a hard worker. Um how many times when we do go through something and we do go through something really bad or we're having a hard time, we're not understanding why we're having to go through this, we want to give up. We want to give up. I've been there and I question God and I'm sad and I, I focus on the pain or I get anxiety. Um, you know, you're in disbelief. Maybe you're going through grief. Maybe um, there's been death um, and we want to wallow in it. We want to wallow in that. We want to pick at it and we want to dissect it and we want to go and um, we want to go through every scenario over and over and over and over and we want to give up and we want to say, you know what, God, I'm done. I'm done with that. But right here, she was a hard worker. She kept on. She pressed on. And this is what I wrote down. Don't give up. Press on. Um, keep it don't allow bitterness to set in don't allow bitterness to set in. god wants us to work through it to trust him i mean isn't that so hard it is so hard but this is what he wants press on um pray you have to continually my husband says this all the time continually renew your mind fill it with god's word and i find that so i find that so um it impacts me so much because Sometimes we just want to give up and just want to throw our hands up in the air and say, whatever, whatever. But here we say, here, Ruth is giving us a prime example. She kept on. She worked. She was working hard. There was little rest. Man, we need to take that and run with it. We need to, um, we need to press on. We need to say, Lord, you know what? This stinks. Yes, I don't like it, but I'm going to continue. Um, just as we see Ruth pressing through, working, toiling, and she's continuing to gather. So let's keep on going um, down. I think we are on verse, let's start at verse 12. Let me back up. May the Lord reward you for what you have done, and may you receive a full reward from the Lord God of Israel. So there Boaz is speaking a blessing over her, uh, under whose wings you have come for refuge. My Lord, now here in verse 13, my Lord, Ruth, this is Ruth. She said, you have been so kind to me, for you have comforted and encouraged your slave, although I am not like one of your female servants. So she was saying, I'm not, I don't work for you, but you're still being so kind to me and you're encouraging me. At mealtime, verse 14, Boaz told her, come over here and have some bread and dip it in the vinegar sauce. So she sat beside the harvesters and he offered her roasted grain. Favor, can we say favor here? He's inviting her to come to his table and he's going to feed her. 
she ate and was satisfied and had some leftover guys i just love any time in the bible where it talks about having leftovers um that just shows how god provides an abundance for us and um like the fishes and the loaves story of that where he just multiplies and it just keeps going even even when they fed the five thousand, which ends up being like everybody guess what they still had leftover fishes and loaves which is crazy it's mind-boggling so right here it says she ate and she was satisfied and had some leftover and I highlighted that I highlighted that in my Bible and we'll get to that in just a minute okay verse 15 when she got up to gather grain Boaz ordered his young men let her even gather grain among the bundles and don't humiliate her again there we see God's favor on Ruth's life and Boaz is being so kind to her. He's telling his servants, let her glean. Don't, don't, you know, don't be mean to her. Let her, um, don't humiliate her. So he's already, so first he blesses her. And now he's offering her protection. Like, okay, this is getting crazy. Um, pull out some, pull out some stocks from the bundles for her and leave them for her to gather. So he's saying, go to, he's saying to his servants, go get her some of that and let her take that home. Don't rebuke her. In other words, um, I'm giving her permission to do this and you know, don't say anything else about it. Verse 17. So Ruth gathered grain in the fields until evening. She beat out what she had gathered and it was about 26 quarts of barley. She picked up the grain and went into the town where her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. Then she brought out what she had left over from him, her meal and gave it to her. Here's a characteristic that we see of Ruth. She was not selfish. She was not a selfish person um, because she is sharing with her mother-in-law. First of all, she's going and she's working overtime. She's working hard. She's gleaning. She's bringing home 26 quarts of barley, which can you imagine like her carrying all this in her like in her back? And her mother-in-law, like 26 quarts, I think is a lot. So um, her mother-in-law must have been, first of all, shocked. Like, oh my gosh, you know, you have so much stuff. Like we're going to be, we're set. We're set for weeks. And she was a hard worker. So here we see she was a hard worker. That's a, a character trait. And number two, she wasn't selfish. Because remember, a couple of verses up, she ate, was satisfied, and she had some leftover. And now her leftover, she's getting to share with her mother-in-law. And I just thought that was such a sweet gesture. Um, she wasn't greedy. She wasn't greedy. And how can we how can we apply that to ourselves? Us not being greedy. Um, share share with people the good news. Share what God has done in your life. Um, that's what she's all about. Sharing, healing, empowering one another. Um, if we don't have communion with each other, with each other, if we don't have um, if we don't talk. With people around us how are we gonna know um, how are we gonna uplift each each other so she wasn't a greedy person she wanted to share and she loved her mother-in-law here we see that then her mother-in-law said to her where did you gather barley today and where did you work may the Lord bless the man who noticed you so here we see another blessing being called out and it was before Naomi even knew where Ruth had gone may the Lord bless the man who noticed you then her mother-in-law said um okay sorry continuing verse 19 Ruth told her mother-in-law about the men she had worked with and said the man of the name of the man I work with today is Boaz then Naomi verse 20 said to her daughter-in-law may he be blessed by the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living or the dead, Naomi continued. The man is a close relative. He is one of our family redeemers. Okay, that's crazy, right? So here in verse 20, Naomi is realizing who Ruth is gleaned from, and it was her family redeemer. So let's back up. A family redeemer at that time, let me explain to you what that was, were relatives who... Um, were able to buy back family members from debt, slavery, or they were able to redeem their field if they had to sell it. So in the, in Naomi's case, you know, when she came back, Boaz 
could, was able to buy back her um, her land because he was a family redeemer. So the family redeemer would also receive restitution on behalf of a deceased family member or pursue his killer to ensure that justice was served, which nobody had killed him. But um, he might also raise up a child for the dead relative in order to maintain the connection between um, them. It's hereditary property. Though Boaz had no legal obligation to act in this way. So that's what a family redeemer was at that time. It was a relative who could buy back um, family members or redeem their field. So this is all getting ready to blow out of the water. So um, that's why when Naomi heard that, she said, this man is a close relative. He is one of our family redeemers. Verse 21, let's keep going. Ruth the Moabitess said, he also told me, to stay with my young men until they have finished all of my hard harvest. So Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Ruth, my daughter, it is good for you to work with his female servants so that nothing will happen to you in another field. Ruth stayed close to Boaz's female servants and gathered grain until the barley and the wheat harvesters were finished. And she lived with her mother-in-law. So that's the end of chapter two. So let's recap a little bit. Apply that to our lives. Are we look? Let's look at our lives for a minute. Are we able to take instruction from um, people in our lives, from our pastor, from um, leadership? That that is a, that is a character trait that we all need to be able to take instruction, take good advice, take constructive criticism. Um, it is for our good. God will eventually confirm it in, in us as well to take good instruction, to take heed. Um, we'll know. We will know. If we're praying about it, we will know if that's the right um, way to go about it. And another character trait of Ruth that we've seen. So I just want us to apply that to our lives. Um, she was able to take advice. The other character trait was that she shared she wasn't greedy with her mother-in-law um and the other one was that she was a hard worker so all these things um are things that we should be instilling in us as well and to continue to press on because god is doing something amazing in their lives and we will get to see it all unfolding it's all getting ready to unfold in chapter three and chapter four. So um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this Facebook Live today for chapter two. Um, if you would please share, share, share this video. The more that we share it, the more that people see it, the more that people are introduced to the ministry she. And um, I hope that you guys are enjoying these. And chapter three, I hope to do next week. I'm not gonna leave you out on a cliffhanger for two weeks, I promise. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.